creating realistic fur or hair seems easy in the hands of experts. But when you try it, it never comes out as convincing as you want. What are they doing that you are not? What can you do to create stunning hair systems? Realism is a style choice, but one that requires a lot of attention. The goal is to convince the viewer that what they are watching on screen isn't CGI. But rather a live action performance. Well, today I'm gonna share with you the key to realistic grooming using Blender's hair system. This applies to hair and fur. There are two things I want to mention first. One, you would think that the modeling part doesn't really matter for a hair system. It does though. There are basic principles that apply to make the character appealing. These things will dictate the overall feel of the character and form the first layer of detail. This will influence the third detail layer. In our case, that's fur, breaking silhouette and adding interest and flow. For completeness sake, the second layer of detail can be medium shapes, like accessories, smaller objects and bits and bobs that break the silhouette. The silhouette is important for readability of a character. These are some great examples of silhouettes. See how you can easily recognize each one. A clean silhouette is composed through the use of shape language, rhythm and flow, contrast, stylization and proportion. 2. Shading. What separates a horse from a zebra? The stripes. I know there's more, but that is the main indicator at first glance. So hair color and patterns are essential. The devil is in the details, a coat of fur is never fully one color. Even on a macro level, from a distance it might look red, but close up you can discover a whole bunch of random hair colors. In painting, we see this a lot too. The overall feel can be a bright blue or a warm brown. But upon closer examination, that feeling is composed of a different, more varied color palette. Let's dive into grooming next. Grooming refers to the procedure of creating and arranging elements like hair, leaves, feathers, scales and other types of simulated fuzz on 3D models to achieve the desired look. To get a realistic coat of fur, we must find the balance between these grooming subsections. Density, length, flow, Variation. Let's populate the model with a quick fur setup. This way we can easily see what we're talking about. To do so, select the model, shift A to add a new curves object, and from the drop down, choose fur. This creates a list of geometry nodes modifiers, which allows us to fully customize our hair system. For example, in the set hair curve profile, we can set the hair thickness and shape. And below that, in the interpolate hair curve section, we can increase or decrease the density. Use the viewport amount to reduce the interpolated hairs displayed. I will explain more about interpolation later. The density of hair refers to how closely packed the individual strands are within a given area. In real life, human hair varies in the density across different parts of the scalp. A realistic hair system should have the right balance between the thickness and the spacing of the hair strands. In other words, try not to compensate the lack of density with the thickness of the strands. Use reference to match the density of the desired hairstyle. It can create the illusion of fullness or lack thereof. To select the part where the hair should be visible, we can create a density mask. This can either be done using vertex groups or texture maps. The first depends on the resolution of the model and the topology. The latter depends on the resolution of the texture map. In case of this Muppet, we shouldn't generate the hair through the clothing. A fun way to create a quick mask is to bake a texture. What we need is the model, shaded white, and the clothing around it to cast shadows. Shadows black. We are left with a black and white mask that we can feed into our density mask texture. To clean up the mask if needed, I recommend using the texture paint capabilities of Blender or use your favorite drawing program. Now this Muppet explodes out of its clothing, we should do something about it. I think our next step will take us in the right direction. Flow refers to the way that hair falls and moves, mimicking the natural behavior of real hair. In Blender we have the tools to optimize flow. With our hair curve selected, go into sculpt mode. On the left side we can find our tools. The most important one for this step is the comb. With the comb we can brush over the guide curves. Each guide curve will influence a part of the total hair coverage. Whenever the guide curves are difficult to see, I recommend toggling the X-ray view here or drop down the viewport overlays and find cage opacity down here. Use the comb to sculpt the hair in the natural direction. Let it follow the arms or the legs or let it fall down the body. The 3D model's aesthetics, its overall design, will set the stage for the flow of the hair. Here I'm directing the guide curves in a loop, almost matching the edge loops around the mouth. You can switch between edit mode and sculpt mode to select individual strands. 
This can help when you really want to get fine control over each strand. The interpolated curves in between two guide curves will sort of blend from one shape to another. Think of it like keyframes and the blending in between two poses. So by linking them up into a continuous loop, we can create flow in our fur coat. The flow of hair can be tailored to complement the wearer's facial features. For instance, hairstyles that frame the face or draw attention to specific features can enhance the overall appearance and realism. After this Muppet's first grooming pass, we can clearly tell that the hair is way too long. Hair comes naturally in different lengths, but how can we control this length in our 3D models? Well, I have a couple of practical techniques to share with you. Firstly, we can control the length in sculpt mode using Blender's hair tools. I like to use the grow and shrink. Brush over the hairs to grow them and hold control to shrink them. This is quite useful for human hairstyles. In this case, the Muppet has a fairly even hair length. So why don't we use one of Blender's hair assets to control the hair length? Drag the trim hair curves on the curves object and play with the settings. If you combine this with the sculpting method, the replace length should not be checked. But you could use this node to introduce hair length variation. For now, check the replace length. This will set a target length for the hair curves. When we want a bit more control, we can move this modifier to nodes using this new feature from the drop down menu here. A third method could be to use a texture map. I painted mine using the texture paint tools in Blender. Now plug that into the length vector and set the range using a map range node. Also use a curve info node to find the surface UVs to map your texture onto the model or in this case fur. Of course, we can combine these methods. Last but not least, we need to combat the uniformness of the generated hair system. In other words, we need to add variety in every way possible that matches our reference. The quick fur operator comes with a hair curves noise already. This is a good start to break up the evenness of the coat. Remember that for most of the hair assets, we can use a vertex group or a texture map to control them. And that way we can introduce variation manually. Almost every hair curves modifier has a form of masking. For example, the clump hair curves. As the name suggests, this will group the interpolated hairs into smaller clusters. The guide mask determines a factor value for the number of eligible guide curves. That means some guide curves will be ignored for this effect. This brings me to the next effect. Runaway curves could be an excellent way to break up the uniformness of the fur coat. Add another hair curves noise. Set the distance to a low number like 4mm, adjust the scale of the noise and the scale along each curve. Now the hair is spread out quite a lot, so we should limit this. Use a random value node with the operation set to boolean. Use the probability slider to indicate we only want a small number of hairs to be affected. The curve ID from the curve info node lets you select the entire strand instead of each point on the strand. This is our base coat finished, but don't be afraid to stack more hair systems on top of each other. For example, this dude has some serious overgrown ear hairs, which I can more easily control now that they are a separate curves object. For each hair system, the same principles apply. Of course, ear hairs are not the only thing you can think of. We could add eyebrows, facial hair, like beards and mustaches, or tiny hairs on the skin. To summarize, we have four elements that make up a realistic grooming. Density, length, flow, and variation. The contrast between these attributes is what makes up a believable hair system. First, create a base layer, then add smaller hair systems on top of that. This will make it easier to control. Stick to these principles and you will end up with realistic hair on your characters. There is one more thing that could help you lift your work to higher levels. Check out this video to learn all about it. Stay creative, till next time, ciao.